Hey everyone! In this video, I'll show you how to set up a WebSocket server that runs on this tiny little Esprino Wi-Fi device. This way, you can do two-way communication between this and anything it's connected to through its pins and a web browser over your Wi-Fi connection. So just as a quick example, I have it set up to where this button on here, when I press it, it changes the status of the page. And then when I release it, it changes back. And then to show that it's actually two-way, when I change this select input, it lights up the LED. And then by changing it back, I can turn it off. Pretty cool stuff, right? So let's jump over to the code and see what it looks like. Okay, so this is the Esprino Web IDE. And you see on the left here, there's a JavaScript REPL. And anything you type into this actually gets evaluated on the Esprino Wi-Fi device itself. So it's not happening here in the IDE, it's being sent and then the response is being returned. And whatever code you write over here, when you click this send button, it gets sent to the Esprino IDE and executed as well. You can also save the state of the Esprino device itself so that when it's powered off and powered back on, it'll pick right back up where you left off. So let's go over the code. First, I'm importing this Wi-Fi module, obviously because we want to access Wi-Fi. Uh, here I'm creating a clients array, and I'll use this to keep track of any WebSockets that are currently connected. Here is the Wi-Fi SSID name. I've replaced it with just a dot 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 here, but this is where you would put in your Wi-Fi SSID name. And then here in this Wi-Fi options object, you would put your password where this dot 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 is for your Wi-Fi. Next, it just prints connecting so that we can see that we're connecting over here. And then I'm calling this connect function from the Wi-Fi module and passing in those values that I defined up here. This also takes in a function, and you'll notice that I'm using ES6 arrow functions here. Esprino actually supports a lot of the ES6 standard at this point. So this function takes in an error parameter, um, and if that error parameter isn't null, then I'm going to throw an exception here because something went wrong when we were trying to connect. Next, I'm calling this getIP method, which takes in a function with two parameters. One is a potential error parameter, and one is this info object. And so if the error isn't null, again, we throw the exception. And if the error is null and everything was fine, then we'll print the IP property off of this info object. So this is going to print the Esprino Wi-Fi device's IP address to the console over here. And then I'm calling this start server function. So here's what that function looks like. First, it imports this WS module, which is for WebSockets. And then it calls the create server function from that and passes in this page handler function, which I'll get to in a minute. It also sets up the WebSocket handler. So basically what's happening here is any requests that are made for a normal page will be directed to this handler, and any WebSocket requests will be directed to this handler. And then I start the server listening on port 80, which is the default HTTP port. So then down here, we have this page handler function, and it takes in a request object and a response object. It writes to the response object a status code of 200, which is the HTTP OK status code. And it sets a header for the content type so that it's HTML because we're serving an HTML page. This is the contents of the page that's being sent to it. It's a pretty simple HTML page. The real interesting part is here in the JavaScript portion. So once the page is loaded, we're creating a WebSocket connection to the address that the page was served from with the WebSocket protocol. And then grabbing a reference to this button element and this LED element, which are defined down here. And when the WebSocket gets a message, it sets the text of this button element to be the value of that message. And when this LED select value is changed, it sends that value over the WebSocket. So when you change this LED field, it sends the value over the WebSocket. And when the WebSocket sends a value, it changes the text of this little button field. So hopefully that's not too complex. It is nice that even the client side of this is in JavaScript, just like the rest of the server. So next we have this WS handler, which is going to be the WebSocket handler. 
it takes in this WS object, which is our WebSocket connection. The first thing it does is it pushes this WebSocket connection onto that client's array. So we're keeping track of all of the WebSocket connections because then we can broadcast to everyone who's connected. So you can have multiple connections to the server and they'll all be capable of receiving updates. So if this WebSocket connection sends a message to the server, we just check to see if that message is the value on because this LED select has two options. It has off and on. And if it sends on, then this will be true. So this LED will be activated. It'll be set to high. And if this isn't true because this value is off, then the LED will be turned off. If the WebSocket connection is closed, this event will fire. And basically we're just looking for this WebSocket object in this client's array. And if we find it, we're removing it from the array. So when the WebSocket closes, this WS connection object is taken out of this client's array. And down here we have this broadcast function, which takes in a message. And for every client that's connected, it calls their send method passing along this message. So when we call this broadcast function, every single client that's connected will be sent this message. And down here, we're setting a watch for this button on the Esprino Wi-Fi, and we're listening for rising and falling events. So basically, this function here will trigger when the button is pressed and when the button is released. And I'm setting repeat to true so that it works multiple times. Otherwise, it works like a one-time trigger. And all this does is if the state of this event is true, then the button is down. So we'll send that to all of the WebSocket connections. And if the state is false, then the button is up and we'll send that to all of the WebSocket connections. And that's it for the code. Then if you just press this send to Esprino button, it'll send all of this code over. And now it's executing. So you got that connecting message to say that it's just starting to connect to the Wi-Fi. And once it's connected, it prints its IP address. Now, I went ahead when you weren't looking, and I changed the Wi-Fi login to be my correct Wi-Fi login. So this is it. Now if I just connect a browser to this, I'll be able to interact with the Wi-Fi. And that's all there is to it. So you can see that as I press and release this button, it updates the page, and then as I update the page, it updates the Esprino Wi-Fi. Now, this is a pretty pointless demo because it's not actually doing anything useful. But if you had this connected to a sensor or something, you could then have a web page that you go to to watch a log of its readings in real time. Or you could connect this to other smart devices and have a web page where you can go in and control things just by clicking a button. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Go to the comments below and let me know what you think about this little Esprino Wi-Fi. And until next time, bye!